Hello Year 6, it's me, Mrs McKee. Hi, how are you? I hope you're all well, all safe, all warm, and just doing what we have to do to keep on going. So here I am, ready to make some more music again in the hut. And as before, we're going to start with ukuleles today. I'm going to move this mic a bit closer to me. All right, we're going to continue with the chords that we learnt last week. And we're going to see if we can put them into a bit of a South American pattern. If you were watching my videos last summer, we did quite a lot of South American music, Latin American music, and this is one of the styles that we just touched on but didn't do an awful lot with. So, ukuleles ready? I hope you've had a try at tuning them. They should all sound like this. I have to say, mine's not sounding brilliant because when I leave it in the hut overnight, the strings all stretch. So, should sound like this. Here's your G. Just check that. Here's your C. And again. And then here's your E. Just check that. And your last one, here's your A. So we should have G, C, E, A. If you need to pause and just adjust your pegs, your tuning pegs, do that now. But if not, we're ready to play. So last week I showed you this new C7 chord. Let me put it a bit closer up to the, uh, to the screen. So if you remember, it's just one finger one on your A string on the first fret, so not on the red dot, but next to it. That's your C7 chord. Yeah? And then we were remembering the F chord that you've already done, which is the red dot. So that's second finger, second fret on your G string, first finger, first fret on your E string, well done if you remember that and you're shouting out at me. So, red dots, finger one and finger two. Brilliant. And if you remember last week, we just did a pattern of four chords and then two chords and then one chord. Can we just do that to start off with? We're going to start off with the C7. So we'll do four C7s, four Fs. Two C7s, two Fs, one and one. See if you can keep up with me. So C7 ready? Just strumming it. One, two, three, four. C. F. Now two of them. Two. Now one. Great. Shall we just try that again? Because I know that's quite tricky. Ready? C7, four, two, one. Off we go. I want you to be able to change those uh, chords really quickly is because that's how this next piece goes. The tab tango. I have sent you the track and I have also sent you a photocopy of the music. So this is written in what we call tab. So what it does is it shows you the strings horizontally instead of vertically, but if you can see that with the glare of the lamp I've got on, yeah, so it shows you the strings uh, horizontally rather than vertically, and then it shows you which ones are open strings, that's an O, a naught, meaning that there are no fingers, and then which string has got which finger where, can you see that, that's showing you the chord. So it's not showing you the rhythm, it's not showing you how many you have to do, it's just showing you where you put your fingers in tab. Alright, so now you've got those two chords, put your guitar in rest position, so on your knee, and we're going to see if we can clap 
the rhythmic pattern that we will be playing in this piece. So I'm just going to play the track really quickly, just a little, uh, a little bit of it, and see if you can clap the rhythm that you will be strumming, because the song doesn't just strum, you're going to be playing it each string individually to this rhythm. So after me, one, two, three, four, 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 one, that's what you'll be doing with your fingers and your or your thumb, and you'll hear this in the music. Okay. Oh, that didn't work. Let's try that again. There we go. So clap along to that rhythmic pattern. Let's just listen to it first. This is the introduction. on your G string. Back to the G. So you're always coming back to the G. You have a go with me. We're going to do that four times. Ready, steady, ready, steady, off we go. Thank you. 
Okay, so if you are found that easy, that's brilliant. If you feel like you need to do a little bit of practice, just changing those chords, stop this video, have a little practice, and then come back, because what we're going to do now is do two repetitions. So we'll do each chord two times. Do you think you can do it? Let's try it. If not, as I said, repeat, do again. Ready? One, two, three, C7 foot. Now change. And then change back. times until you get nice and comfortable with it. You basically learnt the entire song. That's what happens for most of the song, that you do that rhythm pattern two times on each chord. Should we try it with the music? Let's give it a go. So we're going to rewind, go back to the beginning, and see if we can play the whole thing. That's if the machine's going to do what I tell it to. Here we go. So a little introduction at the beginning. C7 is our first chord, two times with that same rhythmic pattern. Okay, I think it's going to start for me. Nope, so the chord. Here we are. Okay, so trying to keep the other fingers out of the way, keeping your thumb resting on each string in between the rhythms. Here we go. nice and easy then that's something for you to give yourself a bit of a challenge excellent right so I've got lots of CDs today so just give me a moment while I swap over wow. so that's all ukulele finished for today next week we're going to add another chord and maybe do a slightly different strumming pattern so last week I saw you uh, we started a global warming song and if you recall uh, it was in a minor key, so what I thought we'd do today to get ourselves warmed up and ready to sing, Ooh, you've got, you've gone uh, we're going to do a little exercise called Zuma where we sing up the major scale and then we sing up the minor scale so that you can really hear the difference between the two. So it goes like this, easy words, just say Zuma, Zuma. So that's your major scale when it's minor. Can you hear the difference? Great. I'm going to sing it, you sing it. Major first. So it's the happy one. Off I go. Zuma. Zuma, 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 you'll go. Zuma, 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 zuma. Second section goes down the scale. My go. Zuma, 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 you'll go. Zuma, 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 zuma. So those two 
together, let me get this a bit closer just in case you can't hear it very clearly. Those two together go like this. Zuma, 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 Good. And then we do the first phrase again, but we finish at the top. Zuma, 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 yorka. Zuma, zuma, zuma. Great. So it's really got three parts to it. The end bit is just a big old rest. From the beginning, off we go. Zuma, 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 zuma. Zuma, zuma, zuma. Zuma, zuma, zuma. Yorka. Zuma, 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 zuma. Zuma, 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 zuma. That should be fairly easy, I think. Right. So the second part now is doing it in the minor scale. So we have to make the third note lower than we did before. That's what makes it into a minor scale. So same beginning. Zuma. But this time we're going to go zuma, zuma. Can you hear that third note? Zuma, zuma is lower. Zuma, zuma, zuma. You do it for me. Zuma, zuma, zuma. Same idea coming down. Zuma, zuma, zuma. You do it. Zuma, zuma, zuma. And then we go back up with the long notes at the end. Zuma, zuma, zuma. You go. Zuma, zuma, zuma. So it has exactly the same formation, same structure. It's just that third note that's different. Whole thing in the minor key. Zuma, 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 zuma. Okay, so we should be able to get the uh, contrast between the major and the minor scale really, really established in our heads and in our voices actually because it's your muscles that change what you're doing with your voice it's not just what you're thinking is it we're going to guess in the beginning are you ready let's see if we can do it here we go so it's sitting up it's fine oh, it's started that came in a bit quick off we go oh no it's still forward Same tune, just higher up. You try it with me, off we go. 
Every year the winter gets warmer, ozone layers drifting apart. Okay, same idea now, different words. Ice caps melting, sea level rising, waiting for new patterns to start. You'll get ice caps melting, sea levels rising, waiting for new patterns to start. Okay? So it's exactly the same song, it's just like doing verse two, but it's just shifted up one step. So I feel we probably could go all the way through the beginning, from the beginning and do the whole thing. Because verse three is the same as verse one. It should back down. So listen to where the scale changes, the key changes, and also listen to what the accompaniment's doing to make that tension happen as well. It's not just about changing key, there's something else happening in the accompaniment that just makes everything a little bit more exciting. So, standing up, really good breath, let's see if we can do this whole thing. And see if you can remember to make those phrases, those musical sentences, really nice and long, so you only breathe when you absolutely have to. Otherwise it sounds a bit choppy, doesn't it? Winter, spring and summer and autumn. Yeah, think about all the way through the sentence. That makes it really musical. Right, let's make sure we've got the right track. Let's see if it behaves like this time. Okay, hope you can hear it. Let's turn it up a little bit. Okay, ready? Here we go. Global warming, all the way through. right at the end as well, doesn't it? So you'd have an A at the beginning and an A at the end. Verse 1, it's a slightly more gentle accompaniment. It's the same tune as verse 2, but it's a slightly more gentle accompaniment, so maybe we could call that B. And does that happen again? It does, it's like verse 3. So we've got A, B, something in the middle, B, A. And then that second verse, where the pitch changes, the key changes, is different again, it's got the punchy chords in it. Maybe we could call that C. So if you were to give that song a whole structure, it would be A, B, C, B, A. The bit might come nearer. Now the reason I've mentioned this is because the piece that we looked at last week that hopefully you've seen the video of, Earth by Hans Zimmer, has also got various structures within it. It's a piece it uses lots of repeated motifs. That's a musical idea, a motif. Sometimes it might represent a character in a piece of music. It's 
especially in film music, you find quite a lot of films that have particular little tunes for particular characters, or maybe even places in the action. So this earth piece that you hopefully have had a little look at um, has got lots of little motifs in it, but some of them are slightly hidden. I'm just going to play it whilst I'm talking to you, just for a couple of minutes, because we've got a little task for you to do. Let's see if I can take it back. There we go. So, what I would like you to do, if you get a chance to listen to it again, that would be fantastic. It's not terribly long. I want you to see if you can identify what those different ideas within the piece might be. I feel like there's probably two main ideas that happen a fair bit through the piece. Can you hear the stuff that's going on underneath? some files to things called graphic schools. So some composers have found their own ways of representing how they would like something to sound without actually writing down the notes. And they look like pieces of artwork in the end. So if you'd like to look at those graphic schools first of all, and then maybe listen to the piece of music and see if you can work out your own ways of representing the three note pattern and the shimmer 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 shimmers and with a three note pattern gets bigger when the orchestra plays it that might be just a bit of fun something to do so this is a bit of a longer uh, lesson than we did last week but that piece of homework is just something that you can do if you have time so i'll see you next week more ukulele a bit more climate change singing uh, and a little bit more work on patterns. Take care of yourselves. Bye!